I think vaping is such a craze because it's honestly very relaxing to do. Often hidden behind a veil of smoke is a 22 year old who's been called the Marlboro Man of the YouTube era. But online, he uses a different handle. What's going on everybody? It's your boy, Donnie Smokes. Donnie started puffing and posting nicotine and pot while in college and quickly amassed a loyal following. Really, really nice, smooth hits, really good flavor. I topped out with views at 15 million. 15 million? So to put it in perspective, that 15 million video views and the 150,000 subscribers all came in about 11 month time span. Social media was lighting up, not just with Donnie, but from hordes of people craving a taste of the growing trend. I guess I might as well take a hit for you guys. And my a business and marketing major, Donnie sees the opportunity to turn all that interest into a career. I decided to stop after I got my associate's degree because this was moving and it's like, I simply don't have enough time. How does one make money at this stuff? It's a combination of working with different companies, mainly vaping for me, but also some clothing companies. I've even been hit up by watch companies. How do you get this to a point where it can actually pay your rent and your grocery bill? To be honest, I don't really want to answer that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, can you give us a sense as to how big you want it to be in terms of like dollars? I mean, I'd love this to be making me a million bucks. If vaping has proven lucrative for online influencers like Donnie Smokes, the unregulated digital marketing has become a free-for-all for the vaping industry, with unlimited access to practically anyone, anywhere. It's a practice that's come under fire from the FDA. In 2018, CDC research showed that 10 and a half million kids were exposed to e-cig advertising through the internet. Social media, that issue is bad. You'll see everyone posting, try this flavor, it's better than the rest, or this flavor's not very good. Many high schoolers, like West Virginia sophomore Levi Kreitz or Michigan senior Grace DeBono, admit it's hard not to get caught up in the hype. Like crazy videos of people hitting like four jewels at once or something like that. I would just watch all the time and you would see things and you'd be like, oh, I wanna try that. Donnie says he's not trying to attract teens. Disclaimer, this video is not for anyone under the age of 18 to watch. And now includes a disclaimer on his videos. I give my opinion and let the user form their own decision. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. After all, there are roughly 10.8 million American adults who vape. While we don't know how many of them follow influencers like Donnie Smokes, we do know they pick up the habit for some of the same reasons kids do. And in the beginning, it was like a cool factor, yeah. you know? I mean, people was like, oh, it's cool, vape, whatever. I was a 15-year smoker. I smoked two packs of uh, Marlboro Reds a day. If it wasn't for cotton candy flavored e-liquid, I would probably still be smoking. My very first vape was a Cinnamon Red Hots. I wanted to transition something further away from, from tobacco, and that cinnamon really did it for me. This is perhaps the most heated debate in the e-cigarette controversy. The appeal and availability of a seemingly endless array of flavors. For while they may help adults quit their cigarette habits, all those sweet tastes, around 7,000 of them, may actually be drawing new and underage users into the world of nicotine addiction. Were flavors a big deal for you? Yeah. Like which ones? Me and my friend used to be obsessed with like the juice box flavor, gummy worms. They have this chocolate flavor. I'm like, wow, that probably don't taste like chocolate. I tried it a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. And consider this. In 2009, the FDA banned flavored cigarettes, except menthol, in order to protect the American public, particularly children, from the dangers of cigarettes. But the FDA hasn't stopped the flow of e-cigarette flavors, though proposals to restrict them are underway. Electronic cigarettes are less risky products compared to combustible tobacco cigarettes. It doesn't mean that they are risk-free. What kills so many smokers are all those toxicants and carcinogens in tobacco smoke. Nicotine and tobacco researcher Maciej Ganovich has been studying the health effects of vapes and their flavorants for about 10 years. 
Some of the chemicals that we found in electronic cigarettes, like formaldehyde and some flavorings, actually might have a negative impact on cells in our lungs. Like this test on a cotton candy flavor, which detected benzaldehyde, a chemical he says is toxic to respiratory cells. Do you ever feel any health effects? No, honestly, I was very curious about that too. It's like, you know, what is this doing in my body? Am I feeling anything? No, my lungs feel fine. Yet it's the long-term effects that are still unknown. And keep in mind, if you get hooked on vaping at the moment, no one knows exactly how to help you stop.